Hi, hello everyone. Uh, it's really nice to be here, so thank you for inviting me. And after the pillar of establishment, then I feel very nervous about giving this talk. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not a pillar of the UK establishment. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yes, uh, I want to tell you a story that uh, for me is, uh, has been fascinating and is an ongoing story. So, um, I want to today, I mean, I'm I'm architect and lighting designer. And uh, five years ago, six years ago now, uh, we founded a movement that is called Social Light Movement uh, that with the idea of bringing good quality lighting uh, to different kind of uh, disadvantaged community. I'm not speaking about third world countries. I'm just speaking about our countries where actually normally the lighting design is done for you know, city center, uh, for city beautification, and then we forget about those places where people are actually living. Uh, so mainly periphery and suburban. So what happened is that once upon a time, <laughs> so back in January 2014, uh, I've been invited by Rhode Island School of Design in Providence, US, uh, to teach for a winter session class. Uh, and they ask uh, a very, very weird, uh, I think they, they asked me a very weird thing to do. So they asked me to teach uh, to archi students of architecture, lighting first, urban lighting second, how to engage a community, third, and also to do a lighting installation the last two days, in five weeks, in winter in Providence, that was minus 14 and actually snowing, storming every day. <laughs> and I was so crazy to say yes. <laughs> and, um, well, actually, so next. I was even more crazy because I accepted to do it in an abandoned cemetery. <laughs> and when they asked me, can you bring life to this place? I was like, well, <laughs> that's actually the weirdest things ever happened to me. And I said, well, okay, if you think, <laughs> well, why, why this cemetery? It's funny because my clock is still on 15 minutes, so time is not passing by. It's good. <laughs> We're testing new laws of physics for um, Professor Price. So why, why this cemetery? Basically, um, Providence is a is really weird town. So there's a, an amazing uh, hill where there's the most uh, incredible universities, the Brown University, RISD, and then obviously there's the connection with what they call the culture link. So it's Boston, MIT, Harvard, New York is four hours. So it's really, Yale is two hours again. So it's, it's really in a, in, a, in a weird location. South Providence, where actually there's no teachers, not students, not professors. So they're like the people from Providence living there, is actually really, really poor. And um, it's, uh, it's funny because I obliged the students to work on site. So they were used to work in this amazing building from, you know, pr uh, private uh, American universities. Uh, and I say, okay, no, <laughs> we work uh, close to the cemetery in South Providence. So that was already like a challenge for them. <laughs> and we work like five weeks there. Um, what we did is actually that uh, we had 15 students. Um, we work very closely to the community, so we prepare a lot of the work also before engaging the communities there, the stakeholders, uh, the cultural center in the area, um, an association called SWAP that is Stop Wasting Abandoned Property, and basically they are refurbishing housing uh, for homeless because uh, homeless is a, it, it's, it's a big problem. Um, and uh, we present to the community, the, the concept the students came up with, but we also engage the community and we also create an identity for the space because actually in a, this cemetery was in the middle of a junction and a, a kind of an entrance to South Providence. Um, and so we created, I mean, the students created a logo, they came up with this logo that is actually recalling the map of uh, the layout of the cemetery. They gave a name, South Light, and then they create a WordPress, a Facebook, and uh, also like uh, a leaflet to invite people to participate to the final installation. That was funny because it was in English and then after like uh, two days distributing it, we realized that it would have been better translated in Spanish <laughs> because actually the 90% of the community, they, are just, they just speak Spanish, they don't speak English. Good for me, so I actually spoke Italian, was working very well. <laughs> <laughs> so they came out with this beautiful concept, the students, 
where actually the cemetery was completely in darkness. So no one could cross it, uh, no one could walk through it. Uh, in, uh, well, in winter it's dark at four, so it means that no one could actually go through the cemetery at any time uh, because of the darkness. And um, actually it's one of the most uh, beautiful and historical cemetery in Rhode Island. So it's back from uh, the uh, seven, uh, ninth, beginning of 19th century. Uh, so there's a lot of stories, there are a lot of history of Providence there. And the student came up with this concept of bringing people back into the cemetery, make them meandering through, but also telling stories of the people buried there and the people living there now. So they recorded like 150 people talking about old stories and new stories of the place. And we just put some audio and video to show that. The problem is that, that we discovered that in five weeks we didn't have any money to do it. So we had a beautiful concept, but then we had to find, I, I thought that, you know, American university were a bit different from Italian ones, so I said, well, you know, you will have money. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I said, okay. So in five weeks, uh, we also raised some money. So we raised, uh, I'm proud, uh, it's not a lot, but we raised uh, $1,500. I'm not telling you why, because it would be embarrassing. But <laughs> uh, we also got $30,000 of light fixture donated to the school from Philips Color Kinetic. So thanks, because if not, it would have been possible. And, uh, and we create for two nights this installation, and we've been very lucky with the weather because it was no storming the day before. So panic, you know, like for once we're installing lighting, they, you know what does it mean, uh, you know, to install with the snowstorm. So a panic, but the day after it was actually a beautiful day, and the snow was reflecting everything. So it came out with a lot of candles because, of course, it's a cheap way to, you know, to do it. So um, the cemetery was huge, so we create this uh, point where people could sit and see you know, videos and listen to stories of, uh, of the dead and the alive. And yes, and here. I mean, like to bring people in a night in Providence, 200 people at minus 14, I think we succeeded. <laughs> but what is very, very amazing about this is that uh, the city got so enthusiastic and uh, they understand the importance of this place as a junction, as a, at a community level, because it's very multicultural. There are many activities running. They are just hidden there. But it's, it's a very uh, energetic center of, uh, of power for Providence. So the city asked to RISD and to myself to apply for a grant that is a federal grant through all USA. And uh, we did the application, and we won it. With the, with the same project. We apply with the picture and everything. And uh, we won uh, $300,000. That, again, is not a lot. But in, you know, in two years, neither a broker in London can do much better from 1,000 to 300,000. <laughs> um, we won it, and so we are back uh, with uh, more students, with more power, and with more money to actually work not just on the cemetery that you see here, so that was the huge area, okay? But we work as well on the street here and the street there, and we are engaging all the community around, and this is the community cent the cultural center that is helping us, and we are helping them, and this is the Salvation Army that is uh, trying to solve the problem of the homeless uh, that are actually living in the cemetery right now. Um, so it's a, it's a story, it's really a story of how uh, lighting, light is a very powerful tool to uh, start a process, a process of transformation, to give some hope and energy, you know, to a place where no one is uh, thinking of. So there are some of the mock-up of the students. Final concept will be done uh, at middle of uh, December. So at the moment, they are just a rough concept done from the students, but they are working very hard on it. And, um, and they're doing, you know, models and mock-up. So we are having a bit of fun there. And uh, the side effect of it is that the Southside Community Center is actually uh, winning, is won, is won other awards on the top of our, of our, after our awards, they won other awards on the top of each other because when you win one, it's easier to get other awards. So they got an award to refurbish the entire community center that is, uh, again, is a, is a very powerful one, but it was very run down. Um, the Salvation Army won a grant as well to improve the situation in the area. 
and uh, the city uh, is actually starting a new uh, street lighting program and uh, they decide, I mean, thanks uh, to a lot of conversation, they decide to take that, that part as a, one of the pilot projects for new street lighting. That means that we, we have a bit of flexibility also on that. And uh, AS220 is a collective of artists, it's 30 years that is operating in Providence and they just got a building just in the area uh, to start uh, to, for new startups and new artist community and work. So um, that, by the way, is donated by Santander because they were fined to do redlining. So other good stories behind that. <laughs> and uh, I think that's it. <laughs>